heart of creation. I am one with the heart of love. I am one with the soul of the spirit. I am one with God. Ave Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is really nice to be here. We, um, we've got Mark right there. Michael's here this Sunday along with all the rest of us. And Chief Philip Scott is here, right there. We are glad to see him again. So um, for welcome and announcements, I'm going to say good morning <coughs> again and welcome to East County Shared Ministry where we offer an ecumenical gathering of PCUSA, UCC, and others, all members and friends, and we're all together on our faith journey. We are an open and affirming congregation, and all are welcome here. And we love to say, no, no matter, matter who, who you are or where, where you are on life's, on life's journey, journey, you, you are, are welcome here. here. So I do have some announcements, obviously, we already know this. Chief Philip Scott is here joining us today with his insights and his wisdom. And I will say that last night when Paul and I were out walking our dogs, I mean, it was like 9 o'clock, so it was definitely dark. It was also foggy over in Benicia. And the um, grandmother moon, I always, ever since that workshop three or four years ago, I always think of the moon as grandmother moon. Um, grandmother moon was kind of hidden behind behind some fog, but I swear, as I was looking up at her, her light just came through, so strong, <gasps> so bright, and then all the stars were glittering around, and what was running through my mind was Grandmother Moon and the stars, just, just so beautiful. Um, Session has invited Cameron Hackett to fill our pulpit as part of our search for an interim pastor, so <coughs> he's a part of the process. Can I tell you? Decisions, I believe, have not yet been made. But anyway, he received his MDiv from Fuller Graduate School and his BA from Occidental College, and he's going to be preaching next week on February 25th, so be here. <coughs> yes. Um, Michael, did you want to announce about the uh, Easter Choir? We invite everyone to come and sing, of course. Um, we will be doing uh, familiar music. Um, so um, it should be an easy lift for all of us since uh, we've heard the music before. And we'll rehearse on the second and fourth Sundays of March. And we may have some Zoom rehearsals as well. So <coughs> stay tuned. Um, let me know after worship today, if, uh, particularly for those who have not uh, been with us before, let me know if you're willing to sing uh, through Easter. Uh, we'd be glad to have you. Thank you. And no matter how big or small or medium-sized our choir is, I have found every time it is a gift. It is a gift to get to sing together. And it is an additional gift to have Michael directing. He's pretty amazing, yeah. And he really gets you to feel the spirit of that music. 
So I hope, we, yes, you're welcome. Thank you. I hope a lot of you will decide to come and give it, give it a try. Would it not be cool if everyone in the congregation was in the choir? <laughs> we, we could do that. We could have that as a goal. Um, we do have a per capita little announcement thingy where um, every February we support the work of the Presbytery, the Synod, and the PCUSA denomination. So it's a tangible way for all of us to connect to the wider church. And the assessment is, is $40 per CPC member. So please do consider that as you're doing your tithes and your offerings to the church. All right, your gifts are always appreciated and can be sent over to Murdell. Her info is, you already probably have it memorized, but it is in the, in the um, directory. So we also have some prayer families, Suzanne Holland, Carol, and Steve Hosmer and family, and that grandbaby, Wesley. Um, and prayer churches are the Satuaro Aleola UCC Hayward and Sojourner Truth Presbyterian Church in Richmond. We lift up Mary Burks and Haley Burnett, Ann Robin, Scott Cakebread, and so Jam Jim and Janice Campbell, and so many others uh, for prayers of healing. And we do have some birthdays. Vicki Winkler actually today, Sabrina Costa on the 22nd, and Libby Brownrig on the 23rd. And uh, Liz and Monty Paniagua, uh, 50th wedding anniversary. And um, Paul and I were over there yesterday. Uh, it was quite the crowd. It was fun. Um, so do we want to just let's sing happy birthday generically? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday everybody, happy birthday to you, amen, and have, m yes, Clarice, there was one Sunday and uh, recently you weren't here and Donald did your part, but I tell, I tell you, we missed that, so thank you, Clarice. The happy hour is Wednesday, the 21st at 4 o'clock online on Zoom. And there is an additional announcement here. Holy, ro holy roller coaster, reimagining scripture and a diverse, diverse church. So this is Dr. Sharon, Dr. Sharon Jacob. And uh, the topic spotlight coming up for the fourth and final installment of these mind-bending workshop series is transforming perspectives, disability hermeneutics, and the Bible. So you get to take a journey into understanding the Bible through the lens of disability. You get to challenge your thoughts and your belief system and stereotypes and assumptions, uncovering how this can lead to a more inclusive understanding of all the stories there in the Bible. So mark your calendars for February 28th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. PST. Um, and you can register. There's a little link that you can register. And I believe, Elaine, you've already sent this to everybody. Or it's in the, the it's, it's in the e-blast. Yeah. So, cool. Are there any other announcements that need to be, oh, yes, Merdell. Thank you. A really quick one. The work um, cleaning out Will's office continues. The carts still have stuff on them, and it's going to be hauled away probably after today. So if you would like to go and check out the carts and see if there's anything you cannot live without, please do so. Oh, that Pastor Will. He was so proud of himself for cleaning out his office. He didn't, I think what none of us understood is there are different levels of understanding as to what is clean and what is cleared out. And I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> and I believe, Elaine, you've got our land acknowledgments. Good morning. <laughs> We're continuing uh, from last week's essay on the Golden State Indigenous Peoples. Evidence shows that the earliest human occupation in our state dates back 19,000 years. From the seafaring Chumash and the agricultural Yuma to the nomadic Modoc, there were over 500 Native American tribes in California, each with their own ways of life. Most of the California tribe's history 
is based on archaeological evidence, early records of European explorers and colonists, and oral histories passed on by tribal elders in the early 20th century. While the lack of written records make it difficult to reproduce California's Native American history, there's enough evidence to help us reconstruct the pre-Columbian era of the state. Northern California's Native American tribes included the Yorick, Shasta, Talawa, Karok, Huayot, Hupa, Modoc, and Achumwa, and many other language groups. Most Northwestern California tribes built villages along rivers and lagoons due to the area's forested environment. The primary and most efficient means of transportation was canoeing, though there were thousands of trails available as well. They used redwood trees to build both their boats and homes thanks to the availability in Northern California. To the Northeast, the Modoc, Achumawa, and I'm, I'm sorry for mispronouncing, hunted and gathered acorns, salmon, grass seeds, tuber berries, rabbit, and deer for food. These California tribes created floor mats and structure coverings out of common tule, a plant native to the region's freshwater marshes. Obsidian, a naturally occurring volcanic glass, was a valuable trade commodity in the western portion of the area. And your bulletin has a link if you would like to read more about the California tribes. Lighting our peace candle dates back to 1987 when our congregation received a gift from a church in West Yellowstone, Montana, after a visit from two of our vacationing member families, Alice and Russ Gibbons and Betty and Forrest Brown. The singing bowl is a newer tradition, a gift from our former pastor, Christy Ramage, upon her resignation in 2021. These two weekly rituals connect us with past traditions, with current practices, and with aspirations for our future. May we live into these aspirations of peace and justice. Amen. Good morning. May I have you all stand for me, please? So this morning I was asked to share of the acknowledgement of our ancestors. And so before I share a personal one, I want us all to acknowledge all of our loved ones and relations on the other side. And so I'm going to send this smoke this morning because that becomes a communication, like a smoke signal from our heart to them. And put up your hands toward me. I'm just going to bless you. This medicine, sage that's been harvested in a sacred manner, with prayers and offerings. And uh, remain s standing for a second. I'm going to sing a song that we sing. Uh, it's Lakota. When we are remembering our loved ones, our relations on the other side. So think about your relations that have made their journey 
I'm going to turn this off. So I was asked to share a story about someone who has been an inspiration to me. So this is a challenging month in my journey because this is the month that my wife passed away in a vehicular accident visiting our Lakota mother on the res, Pine Ridge Reservation, South Dakota. So I want to acknowledge my beloved wife, Cecilia. Cecilia Minning Sanchez Scott. She is an inspiration to me. I was happily married. She was the most unconditionally loving woman I ever met in my life. And she also, she's about four foot eight. She was a spark plug. She walked this path with me. She also was a black belt in Kempo, so she was a formidable woman, but she was the matriarch of our community and walked this way with me. And her, our love was sweet and precious and we were happily married, you know, with all of the challenges that come with that. But there was a way that we related with each other where there was always love and kindness and respect, even when we had our differences, right, that we were able to communicate with one another in a loving, kind, and compassionate way. And, um, yeah, my closest friend in the world. You never stop grieving. You just learn how to live with that story differently. And... Um, Truly an inspiration, of course, her passing also placed me on an odyssey of grief, right? To understand grief as our teacher, right, through this world because life is about impermanence. And yet, when we leave this human form, we go to the, what we call the other side camp, right? And we do work from the other side and we become an ancestor and we can allow our medicine to continue to work in this world and you know I was sharing this the other day that you know death is an illusion ultimately particularly when you have people that walk the earth and then go home but if we don't continue to share the stories that's when the ancestors perish right so I really encourage you to share the stories with one another that allow for the continuation of the stories of how that person touched you in life you know, and as I said, she was the matriarch of our community. She walked, you know, the medicine way for the womb carriers, for the women, right? And that we were together, you know, on this path. 
And so I pray that you have that for yourselves, right? That there's a way that you can be embraced in the totality and the beauty of, of love, right? That, you know, the, the beloved is within us, but also the beloved then, you know, when we love ourselves truly and completely, then that beloved will emerge in the world as a reflection of the love we carry intrinsically for ourselves, right? And, and she was that reflection of the belovedness in my life. So I acknowledge the, her this morning as uh, an inspiration in my life and also to deepen my understanding of this path because as a consequence of her passing, I learned the ceremonies related to death and dying and bereavement that are also part of this you know, red wo road way of life. So I acknowledge her, Cecilia Manning Sanchez Scott, this morning. So thank you. We give thanks for Chief Phillips' remembrance. We give thanks for the remembrances that we've had in our past. We are actually building a repository of ancestral remembrances on Sunday mornings. Um, we can all look back on some that have been shared with us. Um, and we give thanks for all of those. As we pour libations this morning, we call out the names of those who have gone before us, those who have lifted us up, whose shoulders we stand upon. We hold those names in our hearts. We also lift them up with our voices. We ask that they be with us this morning as we worship the one who set us on the path of faith and the beloved community. Amen? Amen. So let's call out those names this morning in the tradition of the African libation. Gracious and loving God, we lift those names up to you. We lift up names of those we don't even know. But you knew them, and you know them still. We give thanks for the path that they were on. We give thanks for the opportunity to continue the path, continue that journey. And let the people of God say, The peace of the earth be with you, the peace of the heavens too. The peace of the rivers be with you, the peace of the oceans too. Good morning, church. 
please rise in body or spirit to join me for the call of worship. We gather in worship of creator who has given us the power to be called his children and the blessing of our place in creation. When I know my place, I respect the place of others, all my relations. When we understand that humans are just part of the created universe, we have a better understanding of our place. I am part of all Creator has made, and I come to this holy place to praise and worship the Creator. By the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. It is I, Lord. I have heard you calling in the night. I will go. If you lead me, I will hold your people in my arms. I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of stone. Give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them. My hand will save. Finest bread I will provide till their hearts are satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you
Let us pray together the unison prayer. Life-giving God, may we speak words of hope into someone's spirit today, extolling the promise and potential offered in each new rising sun. May we speak words of joy into someone's spirit today, illuminating their worth, beauty, and blessing just as they are. May we speak words of love into someone's spirit today, freely offering the agape of God without condition. Amen. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us offer each other safely a sign of Christ's peace. Peace of Christ. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. As we lift up our joys and concerns this morning, let us remember that we have members of our faith community, members of our faith family who are in pain, who are struggling, who are suffering. We particularly lift up um, the Namadi family um, and Maxine Chan. Um, who I believe is now has returned home and is in, and is in hospice. So we lift up prayers for that family. We hold them in our hearts. We ask that our loving and healing God be with them. As we move into these joys and concerns, we will start with our <clears throat> family at home. Are there members at home who um, want to share joys and concerns? Online today, we have um, five people, as far as I can see. Um, we have um, Jim and Janie Hodges, 
Chet Diblo, Rose Solerzano, and we have Bob Flagel. Do any of you have any prayers I can relay to our congregation in church? I'm not seeing any, so I'd like to lift up prayers for all of them for any concerns they may have that they're not speaking out loud. Lord, in your mercy. Anne and Julie Custer, as of last night anyway, Anne was still in the hospital, Kaiser at Deer Valley. It sounds like she might be released back to the board and care soon, but as far as I know, she's still in the hospital. Lord, in your mercy. Our little great-grandson, Wes, has been released from the hospital Amen. and is home now. Lord, in your grace. Okay, I pray for uh, Ellen Grissett and Nancy while Nancy's in the board and care. Lord, in your mercy. Other joys and concerns? Hello, guys. Um, so things with Antioch Unified are going very, very well, and I'm really happy uh, with where I am right now. Um, however, I went to get some blood work done, and um, turns out that I definitely need to get my health under control um, because um, my A1C, for it to be diabetic level, it has to be 6.5% or higher, and I am at 6.6%. Mm. But the good news is it's reversible. Um, it definitely can be fixed. I just, I definitely let myself go, and that's something that I feel bad about. Um, as far as my mental health is concerned. Food has been a bit of a comfort for me. Yes. And um, I just pray, I just want you all to pray for me in this process that I'm about to go on, this journey that I'm about to go on, and that I'll successfully get healthy, take the weight off, and be back to normal again. Amen. Lord, in your mercy. Other joys and concerns? My little sister Shirley texted this morning as Paul and I were driving to church, and her mother-in-law, Arlene Bucignani, has gone to heaven. Mm -hmm. So just prayers for them. Um, my two nieces and one nephew, who are Shirley's, my sister's kids, are having a tough time. God in your grace. Hear our prayers. <laughs> Through our voices, you've heard our prayers. From our hearts, you feel our prayers. We lift them up to you, O oh God. We ask that you be with each and every one who is in need of prayer today. And I guess I would say that's all of us. So we're, we lift each other up. It is a joy to have Chief Philip with us this morning to lead us in worship, to provide us a message of hope, and insight. We love the notion of thinking into our future about seven generations, how we prepare for seven generations. 
we will one day be ancestors. We will be shepherding those generations. So we give thanks for that. Hear our prayers this morning. Hold us in your care. Keep us faithful in your word. We ask that you wrap your arms around Wes and Donald, Nancy and Alan, Ann and Julie. We ask that you wrap your arms around our church family at home. Be with us today and every day as we travel through this life. Help us to remember who we are and whose we are. We are yours. And as we remember the prayer that has been taught to us using new words, we say, O oh great spirit, our Father from above, we honor your name as sacred and holy. Bring your good robe to us where the beauty of your ways in the spirit world above is reflected in the earth below. Provide for us day by day the elk, the buffalo, and the salmon, the corn, the squash, and the wild rice, all the things we need for each day. Release us from the things we have done wrong in the same way we release others for the things done wrong to us. Guide us away from the things that tempt us to stray from your good road and set us free from the evil one and his worthless ways. Aho, may it be so. Amen. Lord, listen to your children pray. Oh, Lord, send your spirit in this place. Oh, Lord, listen to your children pray. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Singing. Listen to your children singing. Oh, Lord, send your spirit in this place. Oh, Lord, listen to your children singing. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. We have an Old Testament scripture reading. I guess it's on. In you, oh, it, it is Psalm 25, verses 1 through 19, from the New International Revised Version. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Don't let me be put to shame. Don't let my enemies win the battle over me. Those who put their hope in you will never be put to shame. But, the, but those who lie to people for no other reason will be put to shame. Lord, show me your ways. Teach me how to follow you. Guide me in your truth. Teach me. You are God, my Savior. I put my hope in you all day long. Lord, remember your great mercy and love. 
You have shown them to your people for a long time. Don't remember the sins I committed when I was young. Don't remember how often I refused to obey you. Remember me because you love me. Lord, you are good. The Lord is honest and good. He teaches sinners to walk in his ways. He shows those who aren't proud how to do what is right. He teaches them his ways. All the Lord's ways are loving and faithful toward those who obey what his covenant commands. Amen. Our New Testament reading this morning is from Mark 1, verses 9 through 15. Listen to your heart as you hear these words. At the time Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, John baptized Jesus in the Jordan River. Jesus was coming up out of the water just then he saw heaven being torn open. Jesus saw the Holy Spirit coming down on him like a dove. A voice spoke to him from heaven. It said, you are my son and I love you. I am very pleased with you. At once the Holy Spirit sent Jesus out into the desert. He was in the desert 40 days. There Satan tempted him. The wild animals did not harm Jesus. Angels took care of him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee. He preached the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Turn away from your sins and believe the good news. This is the word of God. All creation is a word of God. So good morning again. So today is an auspicious day. There are individuals who are going to be ordained. Individuals who have made a commitment, a covenant, to walk with the Creator and to share their beliefs. This is what we know is known as a rite of passage, right? Before we dive into the medicine of rites of passage, I want to acknowledge Reverend Will, right? Uh, a brother who I regard, a man of, of, of the divine, and he was the one who brought me here to introduce me to all of you. So I express gratitude to Reverend Will and wish him well on his ministry. Right? It's important that we do that. I also want to clarify something here, and it has to do with understanding indigenous perspectives versus colonized perspectives, right? Because for indigenous people, which really honor rites of passage from birth to death, we say doorway in, doorway out, it's the same door, right? Birth and death are the same door. One's a breathing in and one's a breathing out of the earth, right? When earth breathes in, she brings souls to her body. When she breathes out, spirits go home. So it's the same breath, one door. There were over 500 nations here in California, as it was expressed on the paper this morning. But if you understand their stories, they were here more than 20,000 years ago. Right? So... You know, we have Western science trying to prove something, right? Well, the Bering Strait is a theory, okay? It's not an actuality, particularly when you speak with indigenous peoples, right? Who say that they've been here from the beginning, right? 
And it's actually been corroborated by other indigenous nations all over the world, right? So I just want to give you that other perspective. I think it's important, right? Because we often tend to look through our own filters, right? You know, our own way of conditioning and history. And, you know, I've been here before to speak about Thanksgiving and Columbus, et cetera, et cetera, right? But I just wanted to kind of give you another perspective because Western science is kind of catching up with indigenous wisdom, right? Meaning it's now starting to say, oh, my God, there's actually some veracity to what they're saying, right? And, in fact, in the White Sands Monument, they've actually found footprints that bring and date back the uh, existence of indigenous peoples in that area even uh, longer than they had originally anticipated or had thought. Yeah. So rites of passage, it's in our DNA, right? And the reason why our, our society is lost is because we've forgotten these rites of passage, right? We see this with our youth, with the gangs, etc. right? So in our DNA is an acknowledgement of the journey. That's why there are ceremonies in indigenous cultures for the celebration of birth, which is our first rite of passage, right? from the spirit world through the gateway of the womb here to emerge on the earth to be welcomed by a community. And unfortunately, in the Western allopathic paradigm, it's become a rather sterilized process and it has forgotten the ceremonial component of what that birth is, which is why it's important that there are midwives and there are doulas to continue to allow that celebration of birth as a sacred rite of passage, right? And then come our youth, right? And so around the age of six or seven, there's a ceremony, a rite of passage for them, right? To begin to acknowledge that part of their existence as, as sovereign beings on the earth, right? And then when that young girl has her first moon time, we don't call it a period, right? It's called the moon time, the first bleeding. There's a ceremony, a celebration, because there's a shift that takes place where now this young girl is a young woman who can carry life through her body. It's a time of celebration. It's not a time of denigration. And unfortunately, the Western colonized world is seen as dirty and vile, and that's a wound. And that young girl carries, that young woman now, because it's not seen as something that's sacred, right? And birth as a ceremony is sacred. But there are ceremonies of celebration, right? The grandmothers and the mothers will, will surround that young girl and say, thank you that you can now carry life through your body and help to train and, and, and educate her on what it means to be a young woman, right? And how to take care of herself in that way. And then, of course, for the young man who begins to have hair in different places of his body and maybe his voice starts to change, then there's a ceremony for him to understand what the roles and the responsibilities are for that young boy to become a young man, initiated by the grandfathers and the fathers, right? So these values become instilled through the ceremonial journey, through that ordeal, right? And then comes marriage, right? The beauty of two souls coalescing into one, right? The singularity of an eye becoming a we-ness, for example. And again, witnessed by a community to support that couple on their journey of togetherness. And then comes eldership, right? So the bleeding stops for that elder woman, right? And that wisdom, therefore, is contained and not released to the earth. And so she steps into the sacred crone, into grandmotherhood. And so she is celebrated and goes into the, the grandmother's councils to impart her wisdom. And similarly, the man also becomes a grandfather, and he is brought into the, to the, the elder circles, right? And then, of course, the rite of passage of death, which we will all embrace one day, right? And that there's prayerfully a community that acknowledges what you're asking for to be honored 
in that moment when you take your last breath and you take your last step on the earth. And that in and of itself is another rite of passage, that breathing out that takes you home. And then the bereavement ceremonies for those that are left behind to remember their loved ones. That's the entire human journey, which is a circle. That's the hoop of life, the sacred hoop of life and death, right? And we're all on that. But if there is no acknowledgement of these rites of passage, we are bereft. There's a void. There's something that is missing. But it's in our DNA. It's been passed down for literally millennia. And that's why we're lost as a species, why we're disconnected to the earth. We're lost in terms of our sacred journey. Because that's, those are signposts that mark our way. So the installation of these people of faith today is an important acknowledgement that you witness their stepping into a role of service, a role of sacrifice. Right? In the Lakota way, we say, we walk behind the Chanupa Wakam, behind the sacred pipe, not in front of it. Right? They're going to be surrendering to source, not dictating to source. Right? And so we acknowledge their journey. And, you know, because we are a hoop here of elders, I really want to impress upon you the medicine of eldership. What does that really mean? Yeah. So there is a, a friend of mine from my past who passed away not long ago. And she was a ceremonial leader and a medicine person in the Red Road way. And my heart is really saddened for her community because she didn't share the teachings in a way that would allow people to step into positions of responsibility when she passed. And her community is lost right now, truly. There's not one individual that's qualified to be able to continue these ceremonies. Now for myself, with my community and my students, I am instilling the values, the principles, the precepts, the practices, so that they can supplant me when it's time for me to take my last breath. Because that's the continuation of the lineage, right? Because it's not me that's important, right? Just as you have children and grandchildren, they are the future. And so as elders, our responsibility is to transmit our wisdom and our knowledge so that it will live beyond us, right? As I said, true death is when they're not telling the stories about you and what and your contribution to their lives. So that's my encouragement for all of us as elders that we step into the seriousness of that role because there's a difference between being old and being an elder, right? To be an elder is to understand your sacred covenant to allow your wisdom to carry into the future and even into a future that you will not see, right? So that your children and your grandchildren and their children are not going to be lost, right? Because you understood your role and your responsibility as an elder, right? That's the understanding of rites of passage, right? I mean, I worked for hospice, and I saw people literally languishing and wasting away in homes. Whereas in indigenous cultures, those elders are appreciated and respected and woven into the matrix of the community to spend time with the children so that their medicine and their wisdom can be transmitted. Right? So allow your wisdom to be shared with your children, with your grandchildren, with the people that are younger than yourselves. Right? So that you won't be forgotten and that it's so, so that your values, your perspective, your history, so much of genealogy is lost too. Do you know your stories? Are you passing your stories on to the children so they won't die, right? And as I said, when someone does that in a good way, 
then their community and their family is not lost, right? And that's the lamentation that I see, right? Here is a community that literally is completely lost because their mentor was not transmitting the teachings and the protocols and the ceremonies and qualifying them to continue to pick up, to pick up that mantle of responsibility and walk with it in service to their community and in service to the future. Yeah? So that's really the message right now, right? because we're really in a very difficult time. And this is where you have to dive into your faith more than ever, right? I'm wearing a little bee here on my vest because you have to, and it was in, in, the, you know, in the pamphlet today. Do you have faith? Do you walk and live with faith? Do you have belief, right? Because your faith is going to supplant your fear, right? If you don't have faith, then you have fear. And fear is paralysis and blindness, right? But your faith, which rests in your heart, that's your compass. That's what's going to guide you if you believe, right? And again, I'm not going to impose what you need to believe. That's between you and the Creator, right? That's the beauty of why I enjoy coming here is that this is a place of inclusivity, right? All faiths are respected and honored and welcomed here, right? So I'm not here to tell you what you need to believe, but I am encouraging you to believe, right? Which means it's a living, cultivated relationship with the source and the divine and the earth, right? And the holy ones, the ancestors, right? And then you are informed in a different way. You are enlivened in a different way, right? You are nourished, right? And therefore can also nourish others as a consequence of that relationship because this is what we have been asking for, right? So many times when people get challenged, then their faith falls away. But that goes against the grain, right? We are preparing ourselves for hardship and challenge. So your faith is what is going to bolster you and fortify you in times of challenge and adversity. Right? That's why we do it every day. Right? For me, every day is Sunday, people. Every day. I mean, I literally will get up at 4 o'clock in the morning without fail. It's just I, spirits wake me up and I pray. That's the time. That's the holy time, right, for us. About 4 o'clock, morning star up in the morning, we, we make that prayer. It's the time when it's, everything is so still and quiet, you can really have that communion in a profound kind of way. And that's not just in, in my tradition. That's in many traditions around the world, right? That time of stillness when you can really palpably feel the presence of the holy ones, now, I'm not asking you to get up at 4 o'clock with me, right? Sleep if you want to. I'm just saying at least have a practice that you do every day to fortify your spirit. That's how we exercise our spirit. Rites of passage, ceremony, prayer, meditation, that's what gives us spiritual strength and fortitude to endure the adversities that are part and parcel for this human journey. And that's what we're seeing now, right? We are literally in crisis. So this is not a time to deny your faith and your practice. It's a time to go deeper into it, right? This is the time when it's like, we need those rites of passage for our youth, right? As elders, you step up and you use your voice. That's what happens in native country. That young girl, that young boy starts to grow and change. It's like the elders will sit in council and say, this is the time. It's not the ch for the child to say, I need this rite of passage. No, they don't know that. That's your role and your responsibility because you've walked longer on the path. And now you say, this is the time. This is the moment. We don't consult the child and ask them. No. We help them. Because they may resent you in the moment, but down the road when they become elders themselves, you're going to say, thank God 
thank God my elders did this for me, even though it was uncomfortable, because rites of passage are uncomfortable. There's challenges and ordeals that temper the spirit and help you change because it's a phase change. It's a shift from a different state into a new one, right? So like in marriage, you're an individual, and then you become a weeness, as I say, right? So you're no longer making decisions just for yourself. You're making decisions in collaboration with another soul, right? That's a state change, and even sometimes we have different names. So there's a naming tradition, right? You don't have the same name through your life because your vibration changes, right? And it's interesting, in the West, oftentimes in marriage, it's only the woman that changes her name, right? Representing that state change, that shift from singularity into a plurality or into a, you know, a double. But there's no change for the man, right? But in indigenous cultures, which are matrilineal matristic, the man will change the name, right? Or there will be a change of name for both people, right? Because they're not the same people any longer, right? So these changes are a part of our journey, which we need to acknowledge, right? And so I encourage, again, all of you to step up, to assume your role as an elder. And maybe you will be dismissed, okay? I'm not going to say they're, they're going to, with open arms and hearts, they're going to say, well, thank you for your counsel. It is warmly received, right? That may not be the case. But that doesn't mean you should be silent, right? Allow your voice to be heard. Step into that role because, as I said, a time will come when they may appreciate the wisdom and the counsel that you imparted in the moment that may have encountered resistance at that time, right? And that's the legacy, right? Because when you do pass from this world, and it's when, it's not an if, they may actually share that story that was difficult in the moment but that impacted their lives, and change it forever. Yeah? So take your hands to your heart for a second here. And just take a moment to breathe. Come back to yourself. Right? Feel your feet on the earth. I want you to begin to understand that you are worthy and you make a difference. Your presence is important on this earth. You have medicine that only you possess and you are unique and you are important, and you are valuable, and you are worthy. Right? I want you to say that aloud. I am unique. I am valuable. I am worthy. I have medicine to contribute. going to close just with a song. I want to honor also my mother, my Lakota mother, who was someone who, in addition to my wife, they were actually two peas in a pod. They were, they deeply loved one another, but my Lakota mother was the matriarch of her family. Whatever she said went. You no know, native country is like... That's your elders, like boom. <laughs> she speaks the truth, and that's it. That's there's no 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 neg negotiation. It's like whatever she says. You know, they elders hold sacred law, right? And so I want to close with a song today from her. And I know that we're going to be getting into the installation of your new clergy here shortly after that. But you know, she would wake every morning before the dawn. Right, so she get up before four, right? 
and she would pray and she'd sing until the, the sun would become a disc on the top of the horizon, right? So I just want to honor her and I'm ask you all to just stand to honor all of our elders and all of our wisdom keepers. That song says, you know, Creator, I'm having a challenging time in my life. I'm encountering some hardships and some adversities, but I know that through this sacred road that I walk, I will prevail. Aho, matako yasin. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Philip, for uh, adding freshness to our faith from the ancient wisdom of the people of this land. That's, you bless us. Um, I, am, uh, I am Mark Smith. I'm a minister of word and sacrament in the uh, Presbytery of San Francisco, and I serve as a member of the Committee on Ministry, and I am the liaison to this church as you begin your search both for the interim and for your installed pastor um, at some point in the future. And so I'm going to walk with you through this, uh, through this journey. And the session has asked me to come and do your ordination and installation of your, of your three new elders. And so, well, so um, actually I'll, is Paul the only one here? Okay, so you say, yeah, so we'll, <laughs> um, so I will actually, I'll call them up when it's time, but you're, you're okay right there. So, um, so yeah, we will observe the ritual that we do uh, at this time. So um, you should have a responsive reading in your, uh, does everyone have that sheet? So let us join together as we ordain and install. There are varieties of gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. Them. 
God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. Together, we are the body of Christ and individually members of it. We are all called into the church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling, to be disciples of Jesus Christ's Christ and servants of our servant Lord. Within the community of the church, some are called to particular service as deacons and ruling elders and as ministers of word and sacrament. Ordination is God's gift, Christ's gift, to the church, assuring that his ministry continues among us. Through ordination, God provides for acts of care and compassion in the world and for the ordering and governance of the church and for the preaching of the word and the celebration of the sacraments. And so now the uh, stated clerk will uh, announce what we're doing. Representing the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, the session of Community Presbyterian Church of Pittsburgh now will ordain Donald Lang and Michael Miller to ministry as ruling elders and install them to active service in this congregation. This session also installs to active service so those who've been previously ordained, and that is ruling elder Paul Fish. So we begin by, by professing our faith. As you are able, please stand. And this is for all of us. As God calls some to particular forms of ministry, God calls us all to bear gladly the yoke of Christ given in the covenant of baptism. Let us therefore reaffirm our baptismal vows, renounce, renouncing all that opposes God and God's rule, and affirming the faith of the Holy Catholic Church. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, say, I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? If so, say, I do. I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciples, obeying his word and showing his love? If so, say, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. We praise you for pouring out your Holy Spirit, who teaches us and leads us into all truth. And so you may be seated. And now I invite uh, our, uh, I, I guess we need all of them at this point. Yep. Right. I know I have their names here someplace. Oh, there they are. Okay, yeah. So Donald, Michael, and Paul, please come forward and join me here in front of the, uh, and I don't know, would you, maybe we need a, uh, a holder for the microphone. Can you do that? Because we'll be laying on hands here too as well. And so come on down onto the floor, and you guys should probably step forward a little bit. Actually, you need it for each time you speak. Yes, I do, don't I? <laughs> okay, and step forward just a little bit more because people are going to come up around you here in just a moment. But I'm going to ask you some questions. And so, um, <coughs> Donald, Michael, and Paul, in your baptism, you were claimed by the love of God clothed in the grace of Jesus Christ, and anointed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit to share Christ's mission in the world. Now you are called by God through the voice of the church for new service and ministry in Jesus' name. In accordance with the Constitution of the Presbyterian Church USA, show your commitment to this calling 
by responding to these questions. Do you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior, Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? If so, say, I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church, as authentic and reliable expositions of what Scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? If so, say, I do and I will. Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? If so, say, I will. I will. will you be governed by our church's polity? And will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? If so, say, I will. I will. will you, in your own life, seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? If so, say, I will. I will. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? If so, say, I do. Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? If so, say, I will. I will. will you be a faithful ruling elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in councils of the church and in your ministry, Will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I will. I will. And now the clerk of session. And this is to the congregation. Do we, the members of the church, accept Donald, Michael, and Paul as ruling elders chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? If say, so we do. And do we agree to pray for them, to encourage them, to respect their decisions, and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? If so, say we do. We do. And now I invite all those who have been ordained as a ruling elder or teaching elder to come forward and lay hands upon our um, new elders. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Thank you. <laughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, because it is right to give our thanks and praise. Gracious and eternal God, with joy we give you thanks and praise. Throughout the ages and in every place, you have chosen servants from among your people to point the way to salvation by your grace. We are grateful for ancestors in the faith who followed without fear, placing their trust in you alone, for judges and monarchs who ruled in righteousness and peace, for prophets and apostles who spoke your bold words of mercy and of truth, for leaders and teachers in every age who have nurtured your people in faith and faithfulness. Above all, we praise you for Jesus Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life to set others free. Anointed by your Holy Spirit, he proclaimed your reign on the earth, revealing your saving love in all he said and did. Gracious God, brought your spirit upon your servants, Donald and Michael, whom you called by baptism as your own. 
Grant them the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Gracious God, we also give you thanks for your servant Paul. As he continues in ministry to which you have called him, help him to rely on the gifts of your spirit and to follow Christ faithfully in this calling. Give them all a spirit of truthfulness that they may show the compassion of Christ in the actions of daily living and rightly govern your people. Gracious God, pour out your spirit of power and truth upon the whole church that we may be for you a holy people, baptized to serve you in the world. Sustain your church and ministry. Ground us in the gospel. Secure our hope in Christ. Strengthen our service to the outcast and increase our love for one another. Show us the transforming power of your grace in our life together that we may be effective servants of the gospel, offering a compelling witness in the world to the good news of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So, Donald, Michael, and Paul, you are ruling elders, ordained to ministries of service and governance in the Church of Jesus Christ and for this congregation. Be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ. Amen. Amen. So now we get to welcome these two to this ministry. So those of you gathered, go ahead and welcome them. And <laughs> Just a little bit longer. <laughs> Is this still working? Testing. I think it's there. So now to the newly ordained and newly installed, listen to this charge. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by the Lord, a worker who has no need to be ashamed rightly explaining the word of truth. This comes from 2 Timothy 2.15. And now the clerk of session will give the charge to the congregation. All right, this also is from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. Um, just two verses here, verses 13 and 14 from the first chapter. And this is, this is Paul talking to Timothy here. And he's saying to Timothy, and, and now saying to us as a congregation, hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure in Jesus Christ, guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Amen. And so that concludes the ordination process from the Presbyterian Church, but now Chief Philip, who has imparted to us the significance of moments like these, will offer his prayer. So you guys get to stay up here as I leave. <laughs> okay, take a slight step back, gentlemen. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, now that you are official, right, we're going to offer you a blessing, right, to acknowledge uh, not only the investment of energy and time and love and devotion to get to this place where you have now been stepping through the threshold of deeper service, right? So I'm going to ask you to put your hands out as uh, we cleanse you off, right? But also express gratitude through a song of gratitude for the work that you have done and will do in service to all of our relations here. <coughs> Oh. 
Chucha Pela Maya Yellow Tonka Shalo Pela Maya Pela Maya Pela Maya Yellow Chanom Pawa Maya Kucha Pela Maya Yellow Shake my hand. Congratulations. Aho. Aho. Matakriasin. Thank you. Aho. We lift our voices, we lift our, our hands, hands, we, we lift, lift our, our lives up, up to you. We are an offering. Lord, you Lord, use our voices. Lord, use our, use our hands. Lord, use our lives. They are yours. We are an offering. All that we have. Can you guys hear me? Okay. First of all, it is an honor to be serving you guys as an elder within this church. And I take it wholeheartedly. Thank you. And humbly. So now on that note, invitation, please feel free during the offertory or closing hymn to bring your gifts to the offering plate here in front or to the one in the back of the chapel. You may also wish to give online via Zelle or by mail. Instructions for both opportunities are noted in the announcements and e-blasts. May our gifts be from the heart and blessed by the divine love. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. All along my pilgrim journey, Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. trials, Lord, walk with me. In my trials, Lord, walk with me. When my heart is almost breaking, Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me when i'm in trouble lord walk with me when i'm in trouble lord walk with me when my head is bowed in sorrow Jesus to walk with me. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here be. Praise God above. 
God, our provider, as you have dressed the flowers in all their splendor, so you have provided for us. As you have given rest to the trees in the winter landscape, so you meet all our needs. With thankful hearts, we bring you our offering. May our money and other gifts of time and abilities be used to meet the needs of others in our community and our world so that all may rejoice in your goodness. Amen. Amen. May the sweet, sweet spirit in this place necessities of life, that each of us is on an evolving spiritual journey, and that we are called to work to create a world of justice and peace, compassion and respect. Amen. Amen. You know, there's a lot going on in this world right now. A lot of strife, a lot of conflict, right? And it's really incumbent upon each and every one of us to find that peace within first, right? So I'm going to ask each and every one of you to let this be a call in this winter, right? So this is the time of winter. This is the time of deep introspection, deep reflection, right? To embrace our grief, Right? To embrace our loss because that grief also engenders compassion right, for our collective humanity and for our earth herself. It's given us life. Right? So I'm going to conclude here today asking you to take your hearts to your, or your hands to your heart and to try to find deep peace so there can be peace in this world. Because right? we cannot advocate for social justice and peace if we have strife and conflict internally, yeah. right? Peace is the way to get there. That's what Christ was teaching, right? The love of Christ within your tradition is all about love and peace. And it came from within this man who had that you know, inviolable relationship to the creator, to mm. God, wakantanka, whatever word you want to describe, the ineffable, right? So we start from love and peace. Everything is generated within, and it ripples from us like a hoop, like, like in all directions, like a stone dropped in water, right? So when we find that peace, there'll be peace in the world. 
All the wars are a reflection of the internal wars that we incessantly wage against us, right? And so we have love and peace and kindness and respect, kindness for ourselves, kindness for others, right? We cannot walk in a world talking about peace if we haven't found that for ourselves, right? So that's where we start from. Close your eyes, feel the love in your heart for yourself, for each other, for the earth, for all of our relations, for our loved ones on the other side, and for the Creator. body, peace, and may you travel safely back to your homes to share this good medicine, this celebration today with your loved ones, your family, and your communities. Ahomatak Wiesen. Thank you.